Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Swan's Cast. I just got my camera hidden. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> I've covered it up because I thought Scott would be with us, and he's not. So um, it's just the three of us today. But uh, yeah, well, bit of a bit of a mad one there to end on. Well, I said to end on. I just mean the mad end of the game is what I'm trying to say. I don't really know how to describe it, obviously, as you can tell from uh, my introduction there. But yeah, welcome everyone. So as always. We're here after the match now to sort of discuss what we've just seen. Uh, and then we'll touch on the next match a little bit as well. Split into two videos and um, move on to the next game. But yeah, so let's start with this game first then. So Lee, I'll bring you in first. Overview of the match or as a whole. As a whole, um, to be honest with that, what a result. I think uh, we'll come on to it later, but looking back at that, could be a massive turning point in the season. But uh, as a whole, I think uh, I think we played well. I think that was sort of back to uh, what we expect, to be honest. I think they had matches of the games, but I think overall, we class. We look back to our solid, solid self, look dangerous going forward. So, yeah, yeah. after that, I've given away to my neighbours, actually. Yeah. I'm a Swans fan because I was screaming. At the pen. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't really live in the best place for that either, do you? No. No, not really. And my windows are open. Though. Let's hope you don't get a brick through the window tonight then. <laughs> okay, Alex, what did you make of the game? Yeah, I totally agree with Lee. I think we played well. I think that little mistake at the beginning was nothing but a fluke, um, in a way. I think we came back really well into that get into the game after that like whole situation. Um yeah. You know, I, I think we controlled the game quite well. It was quite a back and forth game. You know, they'd have possession, we'd have possession for a couple of minutes each. You know, it was, but yeah, I, I think it was uh, good and the ending. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> I think you're right. It was definitely, like like you said, Lee, it was, it was a difficult game. It was always hard to go away still. We've not had the best record there. So a lot of us were apprehensive going there anyway. And then when you factor in what happened in the last game, people saying that we're in a bit of a blip. Um, it was going to be a tough game. It didn't get off to the best start, but yeah, happy with the win in the end. If you look at the uh, sofa score stuff that we normally look at, so you look at the momentum, we've oh, just lost. We it. lost. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll join back in now. Have uh, the way our backup plan there. If you look at the momentum stuff, um, you know. It was quite evenly balanced. I think the both teams had pretty much the same shots before the penalty. Yeah, so 10 shots to Swansea, one shot to Stoke. We had seven on target. They had two. Um, but yeah, I, I just, well, we'll talk about the penalty incident in a second. Let's just go back to the beginning of the match. Um, but before we do that, I'll bring in some of the comments of people who are watching. So, uh, well, hopefully Lee will join us back then to discuss. So we've got Scott up at Swans. Obviously, he's not able to join us tonight, but watching in the chat what a dramatic ending says eddie so yeah definitely it, well i thought i thought we were happy settling for a point but obviously wrong in the end felt the man of the match yeah i think we'll talk about that again a little bit later but i would definitely kind of agree with that covered every blade of grass and extension to felt the man of the match there we are yeah scott i think uh i think he, <laughs> he definitely put a shift in is that the only time you scream lee when uh, when the Swans score, um, I, he's not here to answer that question. Rooney played well for Stoke. A couple of Stoke players, I think, had a good game. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll dissect the game a little bit more in a minute. Have you has Lee said anything about where's disappeared? <laughs> uh, no, I've just pinged him on uh, on the WhatsApp. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna carry on without him, and then uh, hopefully he'll uh, he'll work his way back in. So first half, Alid. Um, I guess it was just a regular start to the match, and then all of a sudden, Mark Gehi decides to have a moment of madness that, considering how reliable he's been all season, it's not something you expect. But yeah, what did you make of uh, his beginning of the match then? Very unexpected in a way, but I think for him, yeah, it's just out of nowhere. Um, as you said, he's been so reliable for us all yeah. season and I think he's just been caught and I mean 
his idea to switch it was fine, but his actual distribution, because he was under pressure, was then poor. Yeah. Um, and, you know, unfortunately for him, the player was there, flicked it on, and they scored from it. Well, for me, um, like, obviously they were closing down, so they only had to watch the game against Bristol to see that potentially there's an opportunity for them if they're going to close down. Bristol didn't discover that until they went 1-0 down in the game and then clearly realised because we gave two away from being closed down in that game. Stoke clearly had that as their game plan from the start and Gihi does well at the start because he kind of turns away from the player that's running at him. But if you're, yeah. not, if you're not confident playing a ball with the right foot, it looks like we've uh, got Lee back. Let me just adjust the... Uh... Yeah, if you're not confident playing a ball with the right foot... It was quite a long distance pass for him to be playing under a lot of pressure. I just think he needs to put that into like just up the other end of the pitch. He's under yeah, pressure. There's a Stoke player coming in towards him from that way. And he's trying to go through the gap. And the gap was there, to be fair. You could see the player was free. But it's a risky ball to be playing five minutes into the game or whatever it was. And he just needs to put his boot through that and put it up the other end of the pitch. He did the long yeah. ball enough times during the game. which And gave the ball away that way. So why not just do it there where you're under pressure a little bit more than on some of the other occasions. Um, so yeah, Lee, we were just talking about Gihi's mistake at the start, so what did you make of it? Yeah, sorry, that's kicked me out. I think uh, the Wi-Fi people have discovered that I'm a Swans fan as well. It's all, it's all <laughs> kicking off. Um, <laughs> no, Gwehi's one, I think, uh, yeah, it was a stupid, stupid mistake, isn't it? I think can't really bail him out of that one. It was a bit of a, was a, bit of a bad one, but I think... Um, I think maybe maybe they caught a surprise uh, a bit at the start. Um, I'm not sure how often they played the three at the back, but they matched us, didn't they, at the start and pressed tight. Yeah, well, I was saying to Alec, they only needed um, to watch the Bristol game. So maybe that caught us, caught us cold a little bit. Yeah, but they only needed to watch the last game to see that we that sort of press in. We give yeah. two goals away to it in the last game. Yeah. So a very it, worked, high it worked straight away. So it's just something that we need but to be then, aware of, I think, going forward and cut that out of our game. If we need to get rid of it, just get rid of it. Because that's twice in, in two matches. Woodman's one especially and uh, and Gigi's obviously Horahan as well, but that was a little bit different circumstances. Alid, anything else to add on that then? Uh, not really. I mean, the high press, they seem to ease off the high press, but obviously high press is very intensive. So when we were in the second half, I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but when we had more of the ball and we seemed to be attacking a little bit more, their high press was very just it sort of faded away it's and rare I think that yeah. allowed us it's rare you but you can't high press for, for an entire game yeah exactly um, um, i was actually speaking to a friend who's a cardiff fan yesterday and obviously they've turned their season around dramatically um i asked him why basically like how has it changed like they're still playing the same sort of basic style and he basically said the intensity of the press is one of the main reasons but he's concerned that it's going to start tailing off soon because he thinks they start looking a bit tired and he did say obviously they played derby last night and won four nil but he said that they were just really bad derby were um i guess not getting ahead of himself ahead of the derby you could say but uh let's bring in some more comments then before we move forward so we got um andre ice in the veins au very coolly taking penalty i think he kind of waited for the keeper to dive before he obviously slotted it in but it wasn't the best placed penalty but it went in we'll um, talk about that more at the end Roberts is one hell of a boy. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about after this. Yeah. What was you going to say? What I was, was going to say, we'll talk about after, but I absolutely hate that run-up, especially in the 94th <laughs> minute. I know, I think everyone was panicking a little bit. Roberts, one I hell of a boy. I had to the commentary. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. What's your favourite brand of turmeric? Oh, I did see, apparently, we've got a sponsorship deal with a turmeric company, haven't we? Uh, yep. so oh, oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, bit of a random one that. Cooper guys team selection spot on today. We've been calling for changes, so I think and we'll we'll talk about this at the end. Credit where credit due, we did make the a couple of the ones we've been calling for. And uh it paid off. Have that stoke couldn't happen to a better team, years of injustice against them, karma. I would agree. <laughs> Definitely Penn could have killed him. We'll discuss the penalty in a bit more detail at the end. <laughs> okay, so our first goal then. Um I think before <laughs> 
we we did start livening up towards the end of the first half. We did have a period where we came into it a bit more and started looking better. Um, and obviously, we had a goal as a result of that period. I'm like, actually, I'm lying. The goal was earlier on than our period of dominance. But yeah, Connor Roberts' goal, an assist by Ryan Manning. Seen a lot on Twitter throughout the game saying Ryan Manning deserves to start ahead a bit well and he's a better player. Obviously, it's difficult to make that assumption based on one performance. But what do we make of another wing back coming in? Same result, wing back to wing back and goal. Do you want to get anything to say on that, Lee? I'm not sure how far. I'm not sure how far my mic is behind, but I'll just go anyway. Um, I think yeah, with with Manning, I thought I think like, well, I don't think uh, done anything necessarily better or worse than, than Bidwell did, but he played well and that was a great ball in. I think he looked uh, looked quite solid, which begs the question why he's waited so long to uh, give him a run out because I think uh, well, he could, it just seemed like he could easily slot in there and play and do exactly what Bidwell does. Um, yeah. And again, I don't mean like you know that Bidwell's done anything wrong and deserves to be dropped, but I think I can't really tell the difference between the two at the moment when I've seen them play. So as a rotation, maybe something going forward. Go on, Alid. I was gonna say like as a rotation, because I mean last game, so last game Bidwell didn't really seem into the game. I think you said before, Luke. Um, and yeah. I think it's the same with all the players. You know, at some point they're going to need rotation. And he seems like he can quite easily slip in as the rotation player for um, for Bidwell. I mean, he is meant to play there. So, yeah, definitely. Makes sense that's why he was signed before for the rotation to happen. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Got me. Yeah, I think, look, if. Um... If we're playing like a playoff final tomorrow, then I think ninety percent of Swans fans will say Bidwell starts a wing back just because of how well he's played. But I just yeah, as you said, like rotation and tired legs. I think he slotted in. I think he was great. No, I don't well, you know he wasn't like standing, but yeah. I think like yeah, he just fitted into the system and played well. I think yeah, he did a re- had a really good game considering he hasn't really played. Um, he's got enough game time to even to show what he can do. And to be honest, I feel he played well enough yeah. for me to say you keep him there for the next game. And that was up to him to keep his place. That sort of either that or like rotation due to tiredness. But we know Cooper doesn't necessarily yeah. agree, uh, think tiredness is a thing. So um, <laughs> I just think he shouldn't be dropped for the next game. Now he, did, you know, he made the assist. He's probably one of the better players on the pitch tonight. Uh, a couple I of think he made in. a good. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm sure he played that hell of a ball from um, like our own half across to Palmer on the opposite side of yeah. the... Palmer. Fuck me, why do? That's Palmer. the second time you've said Palmer now. Palmer I don't know why I have Palmer anymore. stuck in my head. Corey Smith, Jesus Christ. You're having nightmares um, over that corner the other I day. Am having ni- I am having nightmares over that corner the other day. Um, <laughs> it's, I think it's because we mentioned Palmer in um, the pre-match with Amy. And um, yeah, it's just been stuck in my head. So. But um, yeah, Corey Smith, he played a hell of a ball into Corey Smith. So um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, he looked uh, he looked lively as well. I mean, he had a couple of chances as well, and he had a couple of nice uh, shots as well. A lovely left peg on him. So he had a couple of half yeah, it was two in the first half. Left. One of them I thought was it, <laughs> but he's got a shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, yeah, like I was saying, Ali, you mentioned about Bidwell. I did say he looks a bit tired. He hasn't looked the same. He came on out the season like quite quick, early early days of the season where he he looked a different player. I don't think he's quite... He's had a good season, but he hasn't quite hit the standards that he was setting in the first couple of games, where he looked like scoring quite a lot. So I think it was a good time to rotate them, and Manning's had a good game. But what about the finish from Connor Roberts? I think, again, I just think it was a fantastic finish, wasn't it, in the end? I don't know what you two make of the finish. Go Lee again, because he was delay. <laughs> Nothing to yeah, say? Great, yeah, great finish for a, like a, a natural... Right back, really. To be fair, yeah. Um, we got people in the but, uh, comments asking about the penalty. He was unlucky. He was unlucky in the second half. Though. Yeah, I will get to the penalty. We're just going in like order of the match, and we'll obviously discuss in detail what we think of the penalty. So, it won't be long. Five minutes or so, and we'll be at the penalty. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, sorry, Lee. Carry on. Oh, he's on his phone. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So, no, anyway. I was saying, really. I think yeah. <laughs> I was looking at the comments. All right. Yeah. Well, 
we had a period then, sec, a big, big before the half, half time, where it looked like we were well on top. I think I was saying to Scott, I was watching a match with Scott, that we need to score now, because it felt like a little bit like Bristol, where we were on top and perfect time to sort of score. Otherwise, they were going to come out second half, and uh, you know we know what happened in the last game, and that kind of did look like the case at the start of the second half. I would say the first 15 minutes or so was all stoke. We really didn't look like we were getting into the game. I want to say here that Jamal Lowe looked very, very not himself. Um, obviously, he was the one who got subbed in the end. I think he, he just needs a rest, I think. He just does not look the same player as what you know the one that went on that eight goals in eight games or whatever it was. I just think like his confidence has gone as a, as a result of that as well. So... I think for his own sort of performance levels, it's a, a Cooper needs to take him out with a firing line a little bit because he's not got a bad player overnight. But that moves us on nicely onto the substitution, which was Horahan comes in for Lou. And I I was saying in the last video, which we didn't think it was going to happen, but convert to a diamond. If you're not trusting Ariola and Whitaker to start the game or to play up front, convert to that diamond system. And it kind of worked. We definitely looked more creative after he came on. We kind of took control of the game again it kept our defensive stability as well as like allowing us to attack a little bit more so what, Lee what do you make of the changes or well, the change I should say it was only one you will answer now he's just got a bit of a delay guys oh he's um, gone never mind <laughs> Alex same question phone. Um, no I think it was good to be honest um, at first, I mean, I, I put it in our chat. I originally thought that Smith <laughs> got it right this time. Smith was playing the pen roll, which just was weird. Um, but I think it was just, yeah, so hand came on and just, they didn't get a chance to rotate. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right. I th think we did look a little bit more lively and I think the thing with low again like you said he's really tired of um yeah you know playing week in week out 90 minutes i mean i use the same they both need rest we addressed this in pre pre-match they both need a rest at some point yeah i would but, say though i was still chucking himself about everywhere he could um oh yeah 100 which you know but, he's a leader for the team and you could definitely see that on the pitch but um i think with Lowe the system might do a well, little bit more he there were a lot of balls more, in behind for that low was chasing compared, yeah. I, I think, compared okay. to Ayu in that game. Lee has returned. Um, <laughs> and he just seemed... He just, it's been the same for the last couple of games. He's been... Just looks dead all the time. Yeah. Um, well, the system, as you mentioned, so Grimes would sort of sit deep in the middle. You've got Felton on the left and Smith on the right, who would go up and down with play, kind of box to box. And... Um, Horahan, yeah, was sort of then playing behind AU. Uh, but, you know, the other two felt that Smith were also going forward, but Horahan was mainly the one that was in those positions. But it worked really well. So um, I want to give a shout out at this point, though, to Jay Felton, who Scott did mention earlier on in the chat. But I thought he had a fantastic game. He definitely showing some flair. There was a bone across, there was a couple of flicks, and uh, just neat little touches, winning a ball back and straight back up and taking someone on at one point around the opposition box. Yeah, I think... So he's really good. Yeah, with, uh, with Fulton, I think, again, I don't know if you've mentioned it while I was uh, having a break, but I think, um, like, with Smith being in the side, I think he frees up Fulton to do that. I don't know if you spoke about Smith, but him coming in made a massive difference. Yeah. So Fulton getting into those, like, advanced positions, which we haven't seen for ages. Let me so just... I think... um... Go on, let me just see a couple of these comments before we uh, lose track of them. So, um, I think we've had that one. You shouldn't have Cardiff friends, apparently. Or me, I think. Or both of us. Um, I, don't have, I don't have Cardiff friends. You have Cardiff friends. Just neighbours. <laughs> yeah, Fair just neighbours. Yeah. Awful mistake by Mark, but he didn't put a foot wrong after that, to be fair. It wasn't a penalty. Hell of a dive by notes. We'll talk about the penalty in a second. We're nearly there. Um, but I would agree, Mark, easy, easy, yeah. Mark definitely did play well after that. He put the mistake behind him and he, he deserves a bit of credit for that. Corey yeah. Smith was brilliant in midfield. I think Leeds just hit on that point nicely. That uh, He allows other people to flourish as well as doing a good job himself. Saying a dive again. Yeah. Censorship. 
was the penalty foul in your opinion? We'll get there. No one was assaulted in the box. Yeah, we'll. Okay. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to talk about the penalty. Yeah. Um, Here's another one. Go on, Emily. You can start. Um, should have been a red, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I think. Uh, oh, look. I mean, there's contact. It's soft. It's definitely soft. It's definitely soft. But take it all day. The thing is, though, the ref made it for his own back because. How many times was Jack Clark on the floor from soft fouls off Grimes in the midfield? How many times was he not even touched when he was giving those fouls away? All right, it's obviously heightened when it's in the box, but that's the way he's ref the game. So the way he's ref the game, then yeah, it's a pen, but if looking at it at face value, I was a bit soft. Yeah. I th- yeah, I think I agree with you. He's running, they're both running, and they, when you're running and you get your back leg clipped, it's easy to go down and call contact. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would have been annoyed if it was the other way around. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. There's a touch there. Like It just depends on the referee on the day. i probably say, no, it's a bit soft. That's what I would go with. Um, and like I said, if it was the other team, I would be annoyed. So, But I'm acknowledging that. But like Lee said, you take it all day long. We had we had enough bad luck against Bristol in the first half where we should have scored three goals. It was nice to sort of get some in. And it seemed yeah. like an important time as well because... It's... Uh... That's a big. It always comes round, though, doesn't it? Like, yeah. you know, we had the Bristol one earlier on in the year, which was horrific, and you know, we spoke about Sheffield Wednesday at home when they disallowed the goal, and, and don't forget, like Victor Moses diving for Stoke years ago. Oh yeah, um, it just comes round back in a funny way, doesn't it? Alid, what do you make of it then? Well, you you mentioned Clark diving everywhere, whatever. It, it's like that, um, Clark Norton foul on the edge of the box where they didn't I don't I don't even think Norton touched Clark. Yeah, no, no, it was no. a very touch and yeah. it was if anything it was very slight definitely not a foul but just call it karma I think it, it, yeah it's just a very similar sort of thing and but it's in the per- penalty area and that's the difference yeah so we've got um, overall not the best performance but wins a win for me, Andre can't be dropped. Lone needs to be dropped for the next game. Manning to start on the weekend as well. And Smith and Felton, I think we said, yeah, we agreed Manning shouldn't be dropped. And I, we've also touched on the fact that Lowe, if you can drop one of them, is the one I think would benefit more from a rest. And even if Ayu was tired, he yeah. still chucks himself about the place and he's still giving 100%. Uh, how many times he go done with a head injury trying to win win a, an aerial battle? So I just think his leadership as well. Yeah, is yeah, at the end he was like half dead, wasn't he? And he made that yeah. like before the penalty, he's made that like ninety yard run um, down on the opposite yeah. wing. And he was calling no people up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, can't fault it. He made a mega back uh, backtrack and tackle at one point as well. In yeah, the, yeah in he did. Yeah. Made it that as well, which was, and we actually counted from that. I don't think anything came from it, but yeah. Um, so Amelia's saying penalty decision was a joke, could be a season changer. Sometimes it takes a decision like that that can just, you know, we're in a period where things haven't been going all of our own way and it's kind of just going to get us back to where we were, that little bit of confidence to get back to where we were that we needed. And if there was any doubt creeping in, maybe that could be the the thing that sort of gets rid of that and we go on and push on from here. Well, that's what we hope anyway. Um, okay. So we've talked about a couple of no- noticeable notable performances in that match. Let's just talk about one that we would all go for as our man of the match then. Um, I'm going to start with, I already said, but I think Jay Felton, for me, I know Con Robs had the goal and Con Robs did have a really good game. He had a couple of chances. At one point, he looked, there was that one chance we haven't actually spoke about. Grimes played right. an absolutely yeah. fantastic yeah. whipped ball in from the left. Yeah. And Roberts, I yeah. don't know how he hasn't gone in. And um, that was a really good opportunity, but the ball from Grimes was something else. But uh, I just think Jay Felton put himself about really well. He made some good link-up play, really good touches. I just think we saw the best of him today. Um, for me, I think he was the best player. Lee? Um, there was a few, actually, wasn't there? Which is which is good. There's a few players to sort of uh, sort of put their hand up. Obviously, Conor Roll is probably the obvious one, but for me, went quite under the radar. It was Kyle Norton. I thought he was brilliant. I know. No, not including the pen at the end. I just thought he was class and he seemed to win seemed to win a lot. And I think we we spoke about it before. If like Bennett is out, then Norton plays. 
and he does marshal that back three very well because they are still young. Yeah. I think he does that really well. Um, yeah, I just I thought he was solid, and I think like on the weekend when we had that mistake, we seemed to fall apart a bit. There wasn't really that like Bennett Norton figure at the back there to, to sort of settle things down. But I think after the mistake, in, in, you know, quite so early on, um, I think having Norton in there at the back, they just seemed to slot back in and they played really well after the mistake. Yeah. But for me, just Norton's presence on the pitch, I'll give, I'll give it to him. We've spoke about Norton and uh, Bennett being experienced at the back and we miss them when they're not there, so it's, uh, you know, it shows really. Oh, I, it. I did forget as well the, the chance, the Stephen Fletcher chance. They said he missed it, but I had Norton tackles that onto the post. He gets a touch onto the post there, which I think I, saves the goal. from I, I didn't one. catch on to that, but yeah, I'll have to have a look in the highlights. But if, if so, fair enough, mm-hmm. like... He came in for a lot of stick after that Brentford performance, and maybe rightly so. But he's definitely been one of the better, perfor- you know, a good performer again this season. On the whole, known as he's he's reliable and experienced, and kind of just does the job you need him to every week. I think uh, most of the time. Alad then man of the match. Difficult because, I mean, they. Kyle, both Fulton and Norton played really well. Roberts played well. I think as a whole, we did play well. Um, ah, I'm going to... I'm going to say I think Fulton. I, I just think he was everywhere. Um, yeah. I think he, you know, he was putting in tackles that he needed to put in. He was playing balls. He was taking people on. Um, you know, I, I think it's Fulton for me. Okay. Um, it's fair enough. Okay, um, we'll have a quick look at the comments know. again and then move on to our predictions. Um, let's see who, who got it right. Let's see, where were we? With Horahan starting the last two out of three games, do you think it was the right decision to bench him today? Or would we have been better with having him start? I think you can't really, um, for me, I don't know if you, what you two think of this. I wouldn't criticise Horahan, but obviously he's made the changes and the changes have paid off. But you also got a credit when Horahan came on, that changed the game. And it's not necessarily him no, coming on as a person. It's him coming on with that change of system linked with it. Because he hasn't played a four midfield like that before. So that could be the way forward while maybe Low is out of form. Yeah, it's not... Um, I don't think it's just the system as well. I think that was that was a big factor. I was thinking, like we've said, how tired Low is. And if you're going to play, if you're going to finish, if you want, like he doesn't make changes anyway, does he? So if he's going to finish the game with two players up front, then you may as well. I was thinking you may as well bring on like Whitaker just to have the fresh legs in it. But I think by him bringing Horahan on and changing the system as well, it just took us up another level. And I think to be fair, I know the penalty was dodgy, but that last like twenty minutes, we deserved we deserved to get something. Yeah, we deserved that goal that we just spoke about from Robert. Yeah. That was that should have gone yeah. in, but um. Yeah. Okay, the free kick. The free kicks were soft, but free kicks don't matter as much. But as soon as it's in the box, it's a different story. Yeah, but if you're going to referee a certain way, you need to be consistent for the entire game. It doesn't matter where on the pitch that kick happens. If you're going to start giving fouls for one thing, anywhere on the pitch, it should be consistent. Like uh, that's the referee's fault if he's being too lenient. And but you can't complain if it's the same foul he's given somewhere else on the pitch. You can't now not give it because it's in the box. It's the same set of rules at the end of the day. There's no there's no law book that says, like, if it's in the box, you've got to have a tight set of uh, of rules. I don't think it was a penalty, but obviously Lee hit on the point that he sort of made a rod for his own back. So I don't think you can really go down that route saying that it's in the box. We need to be stricter. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do agree, but I just yeah. like still if if it was the other end now, like ninety fourth minute, yeah. we can see that penalty maybe. But that's yeah, that's the way. Fuming. I would be fuming, that's but fuming. like you said, like the ref, you can't say it's you should be stricter because it's in the box. If you're going to give that foul anywhere else on the pitch, it doesn't matter where it is. You can't no, I said you, you can't be choosing. Yeah. yeah, but that's what they were saying. Yeah. Have you seen the photo of Andre Ayew behind Jack Clark pointing at him while laughing after the game? Uh, I've not seen that, but if you can tag us in on Twitter, really would appreciate it. Never a penalty, disgraceful decision. Look, it probably isn't a penalty, but we've had enough. Give it Bristol City away. There's one. That was never a penalty. 
man in man of the match for me. Okay, yeah, he did play really well. Definitely deserves to keep his place in the team. Look at our predictions then. Um, <laughs> let's start with Lee because it's funny. What did you say, Lee? Uh, I think I think my Wi-Fi is going again. <laughs> well, what did you say? Well, I said uh, I, I I did say two nil uh, two nil Stoke. Two nil Stoke. Well, I'm glad you were wrong. Um, I guess that's the most polite thing I can say. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, two nil, so no points oh. for Lee. Um, so Amy, who was your last video, said one all with Jay Felton scoring. So she was wrong as well. And sorry, Amy. And uh, well, I'm glad again you were wrong. I think you'd be glad yourself. No Felton <laughs> top bins today. Scott, who again is not here at the moment, said two one win for Swansea. So you got it right. However, he said goals for Felton and Caban goal is what he said. So, uh, again, no goal scorers, but he got the result correct. Alid, you said 2-1 as well, yeah? Yeah. So, well done. Um, with goal scorers, Grimes and Lowe. So, just the result and score for you. I went with a 2-0 win with Lowe and Roberts. So, I got Connor Roberts right and the result. And John said 1-0 Swansea with Lowe. Just the result for him. And Chris said 0-0. So... He's completely we, uh, wrong. We decided on a we haven't decided on a forfeit yet. Well, we? We were, I think we should have a we just, we should just have a trophy as well. For someone who wins, if anybody's got any like really random piece of like swans memorabilia, like something really random, like a, a Guillaume Bowser cushion or something, that'll be the trophy. <laughs> I don't think I've got anything random. The forfeit, I think we were talking. Let us know in the comments what you think a good forfeit would be for our little league table Sorry. predictions. But um I think we were saying maybe do a video in a Cardiff top if we can get one. Yeah. You've got I Cardiff friends. Though, right? Yeah. I said, though, if, if I end up losing, I'm just going to cut up shit, unfortunately. Yeah, well, I can't if do I one off one of my mates. So. If you're going to cut it up, you kill me. <laughs> as much as I would love to see it. Okay, it was so damaged and chipping. <laughs> any final words on this match before we look ahead to Middlesbrough? I believe it is, isn't it, on the weekend? Yeah, it is. I want to bring it back to um, Connor Roberts' second chance. I think if, because it came off his knee, I think if he got his foot to that, I think it's a goal because I think it would have taken it further away from the keeper. Yeah, but that's, obviously it's, that's why you want just, a striker, isn't it? Yeah, and it just hits his knee, and the keeper gets touched to it and saves it, and it was a good save. Fair, I'm just but, surprised that he was the furthest person forward for that because it was. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, I think uh, it came from quite deep. Up, yeah. I think show yeah definite finish with a shout out to Conor Roberts. He's class, isn't he? I again, I want to go back to my uh, my praise of Norton. I've noticed. I think Norton plays on the right hand side of that back three. Roberts has freedom to just go and bomb on more than like Bidwell or Manning does on the other side. Well, maybe Norton I think has a right back. A back yeah, he just shifted into a back four when when Conor Roberts is bombed forward. Norton can just come into right back, and Manning or Bidwell doesn't go as far. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's gone again. <laughs> oh, he's oh. back. He's back. Oh. Maybe. He is and he isn't. Anyway, no, no. While, while this connection is being temperamental, <laughs> we'll just see the last comments on this game. So we've got, I think the referee in the game, he was blowing up every time someone went down. It was very frustrating. I would agree. He did, um, he did blow up for some minor things. and It could have run a bit better. Um, but I think referees in this league this season, you could say that quite often. So it's kind of, kind of used to it I guess good to see our players surround the referee for the penalty we have been too nice over the years we spoke about this in one of our last videos where we were saying that we've always been too nice and not necessarily had some of these this stuff go our way so as much as as a football fan neutral you don't want to see it if every team is doing it you want your team to do it because you don't want to be the one that's not getting the thing the good stuff out of it I guess that's the best um, best way to talk about that okay Bear with a second then. So we're going to end this video. If you're watching live, we're going to transition to talk about the next one. But for me to upload each as an individual YouTube video, I'm just going to do an ending, but we are going to stay on. So those watching on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with everything we are doing. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and let us know in the comments what you thought about the game, who you thought was man of the match. And if you think Cooper's changes you know, made a good impact or if you would still like to see a, a few more. Uh, on that note, uh, we shall see you in the next video.